and we're here in far western Poland looking for the ruins of the Alfred Nobel Dynamite Factory that was part of the German war machine. You can see some of the ruins just off the road, but the photos I've seen make it look like it's back here. Look how soft this is. I need to find a pathway so I don't die, but oddly, this is pretty dry, actually. It's not making my feet all wet like this morning. And I'm pretty shocked this place hasn't been turned into a museum or something because it's got these massive complexes built all throughout the forest here. Once you get to this part, you can start seeing buildings in the background, barracks. I'm just going to keep the camera rolling and walk inside here. <laughs> I can see a couple of uh, soda cans and beers in the window there. Bit of a modern dump, I guess. There's not much left. And that's just a small building compared to what rises behind it. I'm guessing this might have actually been involved with the production of the dynamite because there's a pretty sizable hill that's been built around it. Naturally, if you were a German soldier, you'd feel a little bit more protected if there's a huge berm built around the dynamite producing area. So there's the first one. There's the second one. There's one over here. And right there. And beyond that groove of trees. And I'm just going to start speed running or speed walking. Because I heard there was a barracks site here and I'd like to see it. What does this say? And we're here on top of the hill. These look very scary. Man, I sped in there, you can't even hear the bottom. Let's find a rock, which is unfortunate because it's all sandy. Here's a nice pebble. We get a couple of them. Listen for the bottom here. Looks like someone was dumb enough to shimmy down. Is there anyone down there? Echo! <laughs> I don't want to trip. So Otto von Bismarck was the Prime Minister of Prussia from 1862 to 1880 and throughout his reign these Bismarck Towers sprung up all across the territory. 
that he controlled and all across Germany and German areas. Kind of to let the people know around who was in charge. And uh, to this day there's dozens of them in Poland. I think there's even one in North Dakota which has a sizable German immigrant population from that time. And most of them are just abandoned. I'm going to see if we can't get up on top because I've seen some photos of people who made it up. <laughs> How do you even drink like this? They just crack the <laughs> whole glass top off. Okay. It's glass in the bottle. We haven't really had all that much time to stop and take a look around at the old villages on our way to the home of Werner von Braun, but this is kind of a typical settlement nowadays. It used to be inhabited by Germans, and this sort of thing becomes more obvious as you get closer to places like the Czech Republic, where there's whole villages totally depopulated. And I believe this is an old German monument, but I can't make out really what it says. And uh, the house right to the left of that monument looks like an old farming house. It says here, Von Joseph Rotha, 1881. This is the old farmstead. Apparently, parts of Poland like this were over 95% German, at least in some parts. And this is the old manor house where Werner von Braun was born and raised. You can see the coat of arms I would think of his family is right there over the door. The house itself was made in 1772. And this is pretty far back in the woods, honestly. It's a very remote part of Poland. And um, it seems like it's private property, but there is a sign up here, so I would expect that it's a minor tourist attraction. Let's see, history of the church here. In 1520, a community was established. In 1742, the abandoned Manor House was used by the Protestants. In 1945, the church became a part of the Catholic parish of St. Nicholas. Very interesting. Actually, this is the Von Braun Manor House. The other house was just a parish church, but we can look around here. Wow. It looks somewhat run down, but I see a car out front. It seems like one of those houses where maybe part of it's open and part of it's not.
We're up here looking for what's left of the Silesian Uprising Monument that was actually built on the hill overlooking town left by the Nazis. Holy crap, that is deep. Watch out for some of these holes, Jimmy. Seems like they're all around here. And so this is the Silesian Monument that was built with Nazi labor from 1935 to 1938. They wanted to erect a monument to sort of their political party, but they felt that they had no special support from the local area and decided to make a propaganda monument to commemorate the 170,000 Silesians who died fighting in World War I. And on top of that, 25 local Nazis who had been killed but uh, the monument itself, although celebrated by the Third Reich, it was never really a local success, you might say. Something tells me a lot of bad things happened here. Stupid teenagers making poor decisions. <laughs> that would never happen in a place like this. Only good vibes from the Nazi Silesian Uprising Monument. And something that I always love to point out, when you take a look just beneath the thin veneer of Nazi art, and just the kind of artistic movements that they liked, you've got concrete. You'll see even a lot of their statues and their propaganda displays are just porcelain or uh, just plaster of Paris and everything they did only had that thin veneer of I guess you could call it an aesthetic but it never went deeper than a few millimeters I wonder why this place was never destroyed I kind of want to go down there is there something Shit. Hey, I'll see you later. yep are there tunnels? I think they look mostly filled in. Oh, yeah. There's a poopy piece of toilet paper. I, I do think that they probably blasted out all the swastikas. It looks like they had a mural up. Yeah, you can still see. There's uh, some porcelain pieces from the murals. It's also wild. It looks like someone came along and tried to paint it. Because that's all brand new spray paint. Shadow of the Silesian Uprising Monument. They got a little white power sign. Smashing communism. Now I'm all for smashing communism. But the white power is kind of where they lose me. The people that follow the rules, they're going to get these awesome mm -hmm. collages. Yeah. Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Factor. They have fresh, never frozen, pre-prepared dietitian approved.